In this tutorial, we're going to do some product filtering and creation using Ajax requests. So this tutorial was based on a viewer's question and it was from Bikram who asked if we could do some Ajax tutorials on the channel. And more specifically, it was doing post and get requests without using jQuery to do things like filtering products, which I'm kind of guessing is when you're typing into a search box and you want to filter products from the database on the front end. So I just put together this very simple mini app that allows you to add products into a database and then look them up. And I'll show you some of this code in just a second, but it's basically some PHP that connects to a database, which either inserts a new item into that database or pulls out the products that we've searched for with the lookup products form. So at the moment, this app doesn't have Ajax requests set up at the moment. So for example, if I search for a product, I actually have to type that product name in and you'll have noticed that the page refreshed or rather the page had to reload to pull that data out of the database and then repopulate that table. And that's fine and there's no problem with that. It's just if we want to have a bit more of a dynamic interactive environment for our forms and our web pages in general, we might want to send those requests via Ajax, get the data from the database and then update that table in real time. So I guess if you think of any type of autocomplete input form, even something like a Google search, it will send an Ajax request to get that data so that it can update that form in real time. So let's have a quick look at the code and then we'll start adding in the Ajax requests to handle the lookup of products and also of adding of products. So this is a really simple bit of PHP. I'm just connecting to a local database and then if we're getting a post request, we'll actually insert a new item based on the form data that's presented to us into the database. And we'll also show an alert on the page to the user. So let's just demonstrate that just so you can see it. So you can see when I click the add button, I get the product added successfully alert being displayed on the page. And if we scroll down a little bit more, you can see that this is the HTML markup that will actually generate those forms for us. So we've got one for adding of products and also one for looking up of products. And if we do fill in the look at products form and send a get request, there's another bit of PHP that will fire, which will basically connect to the database and pull all of the records out that match the product parameter that's provided. And then we generate a table based on those results. So what we're going to need to do is just recreate these bits of PHP. So I've extracted those two bits of logic and put it in a second file called products.php. And they essentially do the same thing. But this time, instead of trying to render the HTML markup for the table and the alerts, for example, I'm actually just going to send the result back to the browser in a JSON format. So we won't see too much for the post result, but with the get method, we're basically going to return the results that return from the database when that lookup occurs. So just to show you what that looks like in the browser, We're still getting the same data back from the database, but this time it's in a JSON format, which is one of the key things that we need for our Ajax requests to go through, because we'll need to use this within our JavaScript to generate the markup on the front end without having to reload the page. So let's make a start on writing our JavaScript so we can actually use this JSON data to generate the markup on the front end using a get Ajax request. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get the elements that we're going to use for our get requests. And you can see within our form for the lookup, we've got an element with an ID of product lookup. So that's the element I'm just pulling out there. And we've also got an element with an ID of results. And that at the moment is where PHP does its work and creates the table for the results that occur. So I'm going to set up an event listener for that input box so that when someone types in it, we're actually going to fire our Ajax request. And the only bit of information I actually need is the value that the user has typed in that product lookup element input box. So now value will actually hold the text that the user has typed into that box. And I'm going to use that to send a network request to that products.php file to get the JSON encoded version back from the database. So to do that, I'm just going to use the fetch API, but you can use any other type of network request library that you have access to, but fetch should do us just fine for this example. So let's convert the response from fetch into a JavaScript object by calling the JSON function on the response. 
and this is where we replace the PHP logic that was creating the table before by creating that markup in JavaScript. And I'm going to start off by creating the table header. And I'll save that in a variable called results HTML. So now what we want to do is create a row for each of the items that has come back in the response. And for each item, we're going to create a table row and then put in each of the column names that are available to us on the item object. And once we've looped through all of the results that have been returned to us from the network request, we'll close the table and then put the complete HTML into the results element. So with that event listener set up, that's all we need to actually go back to our form now and get product filtering when we type into the lookup product field. So I've reloaded the page, so we've got that fresh JavaScript into our document now. And if I go to the lookup product field and start typing, you can see simply by typing the letter B, I've got all of the results from the database that match the text that I've typed in. And if you open your developer tools and look at the network tab, you can see every time you type into the box, a new network request is created. Which you can see has the URL of products.php with the product name and the value that we typed into the box. And the response that we get back is the JSON encoded array of data from the database. So that's all you really need for an AJAX GET request. You need to separate the backend logic, whether it's PHP or Node.js or any other language, into an endpoint that will actually give you some JSON data back. And then on the front end with your JavaScript, you simply send a fetch or other network request to that endpoint to get the data back. And then you can manipulate your page with the data returned, like in this example where we've generated a new table. So that's an AJAX GET request. How do we do a POST request? For example, when we fill in the form at the moment, it definitely works by adding a new item into the database, but the post request will cause the page to reload. And again, we're losing the dynamic element of our page. So let's add some JavaScript to handle the post request for the add product form. And again, we'll start by just getting out the relevant elements. So we need to get the add product form itself, and also we'll get the alerts element so we can dynamically add an alert in there too. And we're going to set up an event listener on the form to listen for when it gets submitted. And the first thing we need to do with the event that gets passed to the function as a callback, we actually need to call the prevent default function. And that will actually just stop the form from being submitted and the page reloading. So what do we do now that we've stopped the form from processing? Yet yeah, you've guessed it, we just send another network request using the fetch API to the products.php code, but this time we'll send a post request and we'll send the form data from the add product form. So this time we're still calling the same URL, but we're going to set the method to post and we'll set the body to a form data object based on the add product form element that we've picked out above. This time we don't really need to worry too much about the response, although what we should really be doing is checking to see if there are any errors that have come back from the code that's being run on the back end, but all of this should work fine. So I'm just going to grab the alerts element and insert some HTML into there to display an alert to the user. And one cool thing we could do with this now that we're manipulating the document with JavaScript is we could set a timeout to actually remove that alert after a few seconds. So let's go back to our page and try and add a new product via that form. So let's open our network tab to see the network request being processed. So now when I click the add button, you can see we've generated a network request in our browser. And it has the form data from the form that we completed. And you'll notice that the alert showed briefly for a few seconds and then the set timeout function kicked in and removed it from the document. 
And there you can see our new item has been added into the database and it's available from the look at products form and appears in any results that matches that search. So there you have it, there's the get and post methods for sending Ajax requests. And hopefully that was useful to see the lookup of products and adding of new products and how you might achieve something similar in your own applications. Of course, the backend code doesn't have to be PHP. It could be any server side language. The same principle applies. You need an endpoint that will give you the data back and then you just use JavaScript to send the network request to get that data. And with the response, you can update your page to show that new data to the user. So that's it for this viewer's question. If you do have a question of your own, please feel free to drop it in the comments below and I look forward to hearing any of your suggestions.